Hello, welcome back to my kitchen and hello for the first time. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and a fantastic week. Today is it. Tap dancing dogs. Today's recipe is super simple, it's only three ingredients and you can also make this with like leftovers and stuff so it's it's a really good recipe i don't know why i haven't done it yet but we're going to do it today so very quick intro let's make some tatty scones So I've done it this way because it's easier for people who have leftover potatoes. So if you've made a dinner and you've got mashed potatoes and you've got some left, then just start with that, right? If you don't and you're making these potato scones from the start, this is how you do it. So get some potatoes, as much potatoes as you like. I'm not measuring anything in this recipe because again, if you're using leftovers, then if you're using a recipe, you might not have enough potatoes for that recipe, whatever, right? So, potatoes. This is three large potatoes I have here. No idea what weight, weight they are, no good idea. Drain your potatoes and leave them to dry out. Don't leave them soggy or nothing. Obviously just boil them until they're soft and then leave them to be dry. Drain them, leave them, right? Then we're gonna mash them. So. You with me so far? We've boiled and mashed potatoes. Um, mashing potatoes from cold is a lot harder than mashing hot potatoes, but we want to kind of dry the potatoes out a little bit. If you're one of those like super like fancy people, then you can use a, a potato ricer for this if you really wish to. You can also mash them with a fork or your fist or however you like to mash your potatoes. Just make sure they're soft and they're mashed and they're not lumpy. Mashed potatoes, right? So now we're gonna add some butter just to flavor our potatoes. We're not adding milk though. Again, if you've already got mashed potatoes, ignore this. But if you're making them from scratch, we're not adding milk, we're just adding butter. So we're gonna microwave our butter because our potatoes are cold. Boop. That'll do. Melted butter. We're just gonna put that in. Right, cool. Now you're gonna season it, salt and pepper. I'm using bougie salt because I'm that kind of guy. And then we're gonna remash using that hot butter to ensure that we are lump free. Seasoned, buttery, mashed potatoes, right? So now we're all starting from the same place, whether you've got leftovers or fresh mash. Now the last thing all you need is self rising flour. That's it. We're just gonna put self rising flour in this. We're gonna mix it until it becomes like a dough. And then, I don't know why I'm explaining it to you. Let's just do it together. That's why we're here. Right, so this is what we have. So, just add little bits, I see little bits, just like some flour and then start mixing. You can also use your hand uh, we might we might just go ahead and do that because it might be easier. But you're just mixing the flour and the potato. Now I have friends that are going to eat my potato scones, so I am going to use gloves. But my hands are clean. But anyway, just pretend it's not potato and it's just like a dough. Right? You're just you're just kneading it together. Get all that tatty after that. Right, and then we'll put it on the bunker. See? Or counter, I suppose, is the word I should be using. So just knead it gently. Make sure you get all the, the bits. And you're just trying to make sure the flour is evenly distributed. Now, we will need a big dot of flour. Probably not that big, Suzanne, but we'll just put a wee pile there, right? Boop. Boop. Right. 
So, make a wee ball and then get your, get your rolling pin. Cut this into three even balls of flowered tie. Now, tatty scones tend to be quite thin. So, flour your counter, take your bowl, dust the tap it, dust your rolling pin, and lightly roll it out. Try and keep it in a circle shape, and you can do that to try and encourage that circle shape to stay. And just keep turning it and rolling it. Now you're aiming for like five millimetres thick. Now it is just potato, so if anything breaks, we can just squish it back together again. And we're aiming for a nice circle shape. I'm happy with that. I think that looks okay. Now, tie scones come in squares or triangles. So we can do a square or we can do a triangle. We're going to do triangles today. That's why we've done a circle shape. So you're going to just score it, score a, like across down the middle and across along the way. Meaning it's divided into four different spaces. And I'll show you what that looks like. Do you see what I mean? We've scored it right across and that's just going to give us our guide for, for after it's cooked. Cool, cool. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to dry cook this in a frying pan and we'll do that together. Now, when I say dry cook, what I mean is there's no oil, there's no fats, there's no butter, there's no nothing. Actually, what we're going to do is a wee slight sprinkling of flour. Just to dust that. Right? Smashing. And then, even though I said we were wearing gloves. I'm going to lift this up. Oh, it's broke. That's fine. So, I've just broke mine. See? And we're just going to pinchy, pinchy, pinchy. Good as new. Right? And we're going to cook this. And I'll show you what you're supposed to look like. We'll put this on a medium heat and then we'll flip it and I'll show you exactly what you're looking for. So, I see we've been missing a spatula. I think one of the children have stolen my spatula. So we're going to use this the now. So I'm just peeking under and there is no colour as of yet. So it will keep cooking for now. Ideally I would have a fish slice or a spatula and be able to flip this professionally and show you how to do it. But this is going to end up terrible. But you're with me. You get the, you get the idea. You understand what I'm going for. Hopefully. Oh Jesus Christ. <sighs> right. Jesus. Right. So that's what it should look like at the bottom. Nice and like golden. We're just going to get that on the other side. And then we're going to clean up all the flour off our kettle. So everything is successfully covered in flour. Here we are. Ooh. Right. So that's still got a nice colour on it. Hopefully you can see that. So we're just going to get the other side just a smidge darker and then we need to leave it on the cooling rack which is like here and then we'll leave it to cool and that's us. I think ideally I should have made it a little bit thinner but that's just the first one so we can make the other ones a bit thinner. Right so we're just going to slide that there and that will now cool. We'll keep this off the heat, turn the heat off until we roll the rest of them and we'll just keep repeating that three times. Dust our frying pan again. But we're not going to touch it this time because it's hot. Just going to roll that about there. Smashing. Flour our surface. Take our second ball of dough. Plop that down. Flour the top. And then roll. Now, am I going to get this off the counter? Who knows? Woo. Definitely going to break in it. Oh, yes. We rolled it too thin. We were too brave. 
that's fine. We'll just construct it again with a bit of flour. Yeah, good as new. That's not going to happen though. Oh. Hey! That one's a that one's a big tax going. That's a big boy. Right, and then we'll just cook it again. Right, and while that one is cooking, we'll just start with the next one. A wee bit more flour, I think, because ours stuck to the counter. Because we're silly bellies. I know I probably say this in most of my videos, but this is a fantastic thing to do with the kids. Plus it's squidgy and messy, and we do know how much kids love squidgy, messy things. So, right, so that one's ready to go. So we'll just go over and have a look at the ones that's cooking. And uh, that's essentially it. So we'll show you one more being cooked. There's no point in showing you the last one being cooked when I've already showed you two. And we'll flip that one over there, and then we'll try them together and it'll be fabulous. Right, so just like the last time, we're just gonna lift up the edge to see what kind of color it's going. We're still peely wally, so we're gonna leave it a wee bit longer. And as soon as we see some color, we're gonna flip it. This guy is starting to cool down, but that's kind of the color you're looking for. Pray for me, one, two, three. Ah, amazing. Right, so I'm happy with that color. We just need to have something similar happening on the other side. Maybe darken up a wee smidge and then we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of the tatty scones and then I will see you once we're done. Hi, so tatty scones are all here. These two are the hottest ones. They've just, they're cooling down now. This is the first one we did um, and it is pretty cool to the touch. Um, so we're going to cut this up now. You can eat it as is. But in true Scottish fashion, we're going to fry it because in breakfast you tend to pan fry this in a little bit of oil or butter and you put it with your breakfast. So we're going to do that. So, following the cross that we've made, that has portioned it for us. So we just cut across. That is about the thickness that we were looking for, to be quite honest. And that is a wee tatty scone. So we're just going to fry this now and then we're going to munch it. I don't think I have to show you how to fry something but we're going to put a wee bit of butter in this pan. We're going to put that in there and we're just going to fry it on both sides for a couple of minutes until it's nice and golden crispy. So we're going to use butter in true fatty fashion. A wee bit of butter. Nice golden brown colour. Roll that about in the butter a wee bit there. Just going to ignore the fact that my cooker is still covered in flour. But that's the kind of colour you're looking for for a wee fried patty scone. And I'll see you back at the counter to try it. Here we have the unfried patty scone. And here we have the fried patty scone. Burnley. Anyone that knows me knows that I salt absolutely everything, so do not judge me for salting my tatty scone, right? I'll just no hear it. Left my phone on the counter. Unprofessional. It's so hot. So good. Tatty scones are amazing. Um, they're in most, if not all, Scottish breakfasts. If you're having a full Scottish breakfast and there's no tatty scone on it, then you're doing it wrong. Tatty scones are an absolute staple of Scottish breakfasts and uh, they're just the best. From a packet, they're alright. Homemade, it's another level, man. Another level, they're just so good. Anyway, so that's how you make tatty scones. Side note, these ones, I didn't score, and the reason I didn't score these, because this is eight tax scones, is because my best friend Haley is an absolute genius, and uh, she's going to have breakfast for dinner. But not only is she going to have breakfast for dinner, no, no, she's going to take one of these bad boys and use it as a wrap to wrap her Scottish breakfast in. So she's using these tax scones as essentially wraps. That sounds delightful so it's also an option for you if you're into that 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing because it really helps me a lot in that weird algorithm place. If not, I totally understand, I totally get it, don't worry about it, we can still be friends, I still love you very much. All links to everything I have is down below and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!